Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today. We're excited to have one of our Power Platform Development Consultants, Savannah Dill, and Savannah will be presenting on Empowering Client Communication and Project, project Implementation Using Design Thinking. That was a mouthful. And just as a reminder, we are recording this webinar and we will post it to our on-demand webinar library for you to review again or share with anyone. And we do encourage you to ask questions during our presentation. So please feel free to type those in the questions box and we will get them answered during our Q&A time at the end of our session. So now I'm going to turn it over to Savannah to kick off our presentation. Alrighty. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. Um, as Angie said, today I will be presenting on empowering client communication and project implementation using design thinking. So before we get into it, I just wanted to introduce myself. Uh, I am Savannah Dill. I am Power Platform Consultant here at Novia. And my background is a little bit of a hodgepodge. Uh, I am relatively new to the professional workforce and I started working with Inovia as Power Platform Consultant about six months ago. In my prior life, I was a student. I got my bachelor's degree here in South Bend in general studies due to a bunch of uh, interests. <laughs> and then I went on to get my master's degree in emerging media design and development from Ball State University. I came to this role experienced in user experience design and research, which is basically a thinking and design um, course uh, methodology used to create the best user experience possible when using and designing products. Um, having this background naturally started me down the path to Power Platform because uh, Power Platform is a platform that continues to become more user-friendly, both on the user side and the development side. And my previous role focused on gathering and moving data to then create the best experience possible when building an application or website, much of which is applied through the Power Platform. I have worked roles in media, healthcare, and higher education industries, but no matter what I did or where I was, a common theme was data and design. So kind of going over the agenda a bit, um, I will first have you consider current practices in the industry. We will then talk about design thinking and how um, you can empower communication and project implementation using it, followed then by best practices, uh, methodology, and uh, followed by some resources. All righty. So I'm not going to dive too much into this. But as we begin to think and talk about design thinking, I want you to consider how business is currently done. Whether you are someone from the Anobia side, a client of ours, or perhaps a future one. Consider how you have done business in the past and the present. In recent times, I would argue that most professional relationships you've made have been driven by strong communi communicative skills in primarily a virtual setting. An example of this, um, kind of consider, considering how things are done, would be thinking about the last time you were on the receiving end of a Business Central integration or perhaps a D365 um, integration or maybe even a Power Platform project. Throughout this presentation, I would like you to consider how you felt throughout the process and how the envisioning process changed as the project went, um, went on. Alrighty, next I will start to get into the bulk of the presentation. 
um, and I will talk about what exactly is design thinking and why should you care. So what is design thinking? Design thinking might be defined in a few different ways. It might be defined as a human-centered approach, a problem-solving process, an empathetic study, an experimentation, or something that focuses on hands-on collaboration. Those are some of the keywords that are associated with that design thinking. If you want a more formal definition, design thinking is a human-centered approach to innovation that puts the observation and discovery of often highly nuanced, even tactic human needs right at the forefront of the innovation process. In other words, it is a process that's all about the customer or user experience. It is about knowing what humans want and need in that moment. So you might be thinking, all right, I understand design thinking to an extent. Um, now, what is the connection? Um, how might this be applied to the Microsoft universe. So before digging into that, I would like to preface with design thinking is divided into five kind of cogs or stages. Um, throughout this, I'll kind of go through all of the different stages and how they are applied to different Microsoft products. Starting with empathize, which is the first stage, uh, this is where we want to understand our user as much as possible. This is where you might sit down with them, see how they work, feel their pain while doing tasks, and ask them questions. This is the time to break the partner-client barrier and to build a relationship that is built on, built and founded on effective communication and emotion. Define is the next stage. This is where we want to challenge the requirements and assumptions about the way we work. For example, if someone is switching to something like D365 Sales or Business Central from using just an Excel sheet, there might be some habits or work patterns there that might not translate easily. Whether you are a partner assisting in the transition or a client, this is the time to challenge the way you work or any other assumptions that might be had about the current project versus the past. This is the time to define your problem and start to explore your options. Ideation is the third step, and in my opinion, the most fun step. Um, this is the stage where you can be innovative and apply all of your prior research and knowledge. With ideation, you expand what you learned during the define phase. You take a step back and potentially realize there are more tools available than just say um, your initial hunch. An, ex an easy example of this could be data management in the Microsoft world. Things like Dataverse, Business Central, SharePoint, Azure Blob Storage, and many more there are many ways to do the same one thing it is important to explore all options and decide which will be best integrated and welcomed into a company based off of their needs culture or important factors this is the stage where you can start applying more design thinking methodology if you wish Prototype and test are the final stages of the design thinking process. These stages can be applied on a larger level on say power platform projects, but also can be applied to regular project implementations by effectively communicating and testing. These stages are iterative and can act in a loop, constantly retesting upon receiving feedback. This is the time to show mockups and test environments to ensure the user's needs are met before a project delivery or go live. This is also the time as a client to test partner work 
and provide feedback or identify any critical work that needs to be done before project delivery. Now, consider the beginning of this presentation when I asked you to think about how business is currently done from your perspective. This, in my opinion, is, fairly, is a fairly common procedure that takes place when thinking about uh, project implementation. Starting off, you might meet with a business, do initial meetings um, where that um, client can outline their current challenges and then the partner can then recommend or propose solutions. And then it is then delivered in a package that usually is built, tested, and then deployed. This is how I believe that design thinking fits into that model. By using design thinking as a foundation for project implementations, you are taking a human-centered approach that puts the client at the forefront of the design and development process. As you can see here, each stage of the traditional business process easily fits into a cog of the design thinking process. So, it is easy to see that you may be following design thinking methodology without actually knowing it. And lastly, here I wanted to break down a timeline that shows what a project might look like using design think method methods. Starting with project planning, this is when you would typically do a um, business, business um, planning and proposal stage. So in the project planning stage, you might do a kickoff presentation, identify key users or stakeholders, and you might work in some design thinking success methods such as how might we, abstraction ladders, or importance difficulty matrix. You would then move on to the empathize stage where you're putting yourself in the user's shoes. Here, you might do interviews, give them a document with questions that are outlined that allow you to understand the client on a deeper level. And this also gives you a chance to explore their pain points. Next comes validation, which fall under define and IDH both. This is the time where you might create a department oriented plan if the client needs um, multiple types of projects done, you could show demos here or um, proof of concepts. And end game would be next. And this pulls on both ideation and prototype and testing. This is when you would solidify a solution, um, create materials, implement the project, test environments, um, Etc. And then moving on to the final stage, prototype and test is when you deploy a project and make sure nothing is broken and the user's needs are met. This is an iterative process, so it is common that you might go back and forth between these stages a few times, um, depending on the client's needs. Uh, right now, I will go over some best practices and also share some design thinking methodologies that you might use um, to understand your client or partner better. So here are some best practices, the first being practice empathy. It is said that the best design thinkers gather uh, more data than they need in order to paint a vivid picture of untapped user experiences. By practicing empathy, you're creating a foundation that gives the client the best experience and project and product at project delivery. The, ne the next best practice would be design and communicate for engagement. Here, the goal of a good user experience is to help users do what they want to do. 
Therefore, an engaging experience isn't about animations or splashy designs. It's creating a smooth user journey that satisfies the customer or client. And lastly, think about longevity. Design thinking is not ideal for one-off campaigns that need swift results that aren't sustainable. Instead, design thinking thrives when it is geared toward long-term uh, results through high-level strategy. Alrighty, and here are some um, different methodology that you could apply to different project implementations. The first being how might we. So the how might we method creates an atmosphere for innovative solutions by reframing known challenges. How might we questions engages out of the box thinking to create a solution when the client doesn't know everything they want yet. You begin this process by identifying and outlining the insights or pain points you have collected about your current challenge or a new initiative. Now, reframe those insights into questions by starting each note with how might we. While writing your question, ensure to consider the underlying factors that may be driving it. These are often the best way to refine your initial thoughts. By creating multiple how might we questions, you have the chance to be innovative when considering a solution. An abstraction ladder is another type of methodology. An abstraction ladder may best be used for a client that has many ideas or a client that has an opportunity for many ideas or solutions. Use the ladder to list opportunities on each cog um, from most concrete to abstract. Using this, there are no bad ideas. So even if an idea is abstract, Perhaps there is a solution there that you just haven't thought of. And lastly, the difficulty importance matrix. So the difficulty importance matrix is primarily used to prioritize a list of items and understand their relevance to your project. As a partner, this allows you to understand the customer view, what the customer views as most important while communicating its difficulty. For this exercise, you will ask the client to choose four to six items that they would like ranked. Once a consensus is made, have them rank the items along the important scale. Once all of, your, all of their features have been prioritized by importance, it is time to move them up the grid vertically to determine difficulty. And lastly, you will name the quadrants. An example of this is, is above. Um, that, so, for example, in the upper left-hand corner of the quadrant, these are luxury items that are that the client wants. Um, these are of little importance and difficult um, compared to the upper right-hand corner, where these are strategic and the the client needs to have this. These are of high importance but also high difficulty and so on. So kind of considering the key takeaways from this presentation, design thinking is an iterative, innovative process that puts the user's needs at the forefront of the project. There are many different design thinking methodologies that can be applied to each stage of the project timeline and project implementation and communication is heavily entwined within these methodologies and may help you create the best experience for your client. Um, before wrapping up, I just kind of wanted to go over, just so, over some quick resources. There are um, There is one book that I recommend. It's called Change by Design by Tim Brown. He is kind of one of the founding fathers of design thinking. And online also has some great resources, one being um, Core City courses. They are free and they can help you dive into 
what design thinking is more so and the methodologies as well as LinkedIn learning. All right, and now I will take a minute to see if there's any questions. Thank you, Savannah. No questions have come through, but if anybody does have any, please feel free to type them in so we can get them addressed. So while we're waiting on that, I'll go ahead and um, share some information that I wanted to uh, let you know about. So we do have one more webinar coming up tomorrow to wrap up the year. Our director of project teams, Gino Pack, will be presenting on troubleshooting Business Central for Azure Application Insights. And you can check out our website for more of our upcoming events at anovia.com slash events as we will be adding more webinars for 2022. And also check out our training workshop page at anovia.com slash workshops for more information on the particular training workshop that fits your role. And we also have our Inovia podcast. It's called the Inovia Conversation. So check out our library of podcasts for you to listen to at inovia.com slash podcast. And be sure to uh, browse the selection and subscribe so you'll get notified when those new episodes air. All right, well, it doesn't look like any questions have come through. Thank you, Savannah, for presenting today, and thank you for everyone on our webinar, or if you're watching on demand, we thank you for taking the time out to watch this. And one more thing before we go, uh, we do have our conference information up on our website for May 2022. You can find out about all of the uh, specifics on our conference at inovia.com slash conferences. So be sure you register for that if you and your team members are interested in attending. It is a free event for you to attend. All right. Well, we thank you again, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, Savannah, for presenting. And we look forward to seeing you again soon on another Inovia webinar. Happy holidays, everyone, and take care. Thank you.